recently got me thinking about our current situation. It was actually just something that I decided to read for Easter. It's called um, Jesus the Zealot. And it's about the historical nature of the figure of Jesus Christ or uh, Jesus of Nazareth. And you could say the historicity of that figure in history. So what was interesting is the author kind of jumped all over the place about people needing to uh, get the gospel story the way that they wanted it for the politics of the first century. And I just don't know if I'm buying that because if you look at what's really going on or how it really panned out, it was the one theme of transformation, just like every major religion is human transformation. So that's was the theme of the Old Testament transformation through uh, the stories of Israel transformation through um, crossing not just the Red Sea but the Jordan Sea and the um, Passover story it's all about psychological transformation the reason that's important now so I, I was just watching the end or uh, Gavin Newsom's speech again, and he made an interesting statement towards the end, just before opening up for questions on his um, little announcements today about trying to reopen California. And he said, we want to do this for the sake of principles, not politics. So that's what we will see the right people people making the right decisions will do so because of principles and not politics moving forward. And that's one thing that has been going the wrong way, I guess, is people trying to politicize all this stuff when it's like, yes, it's an election year, but normally the election year doesn't really heat up until, you know, about August, which is when things will be relatively back to normal anyway. So, yeah, the, the ones who want to politicize everything are disappointing. The ones who want to find the principles of how to how we can transform an individual basis, community, nationwide, and global basis, that's the right approach, is how to properly transform. Um, but the, the reason I really wanted to do this is just to kind of have a level-headed approach at what's going on because people are kind of all over the place. Um, I made some... Oh. So the realities we need to deal with is, yes, people are getting sick and dying. It's not much higher than the normal national average, which is about 8,000 per day. Um, okay, Milo's jumping in here, and I'll bring him in in just one second. Um, so basically, uh, the point I'm getting at is as we reopen the world, we're trying to sort of find the um, principles, not just the politics and ideally even avoid politics, but the principles to uh, bring people back together and to do it in the best way that we can. Um, let me see what Milo has to say. Oh, I might put on my headset. That's a good idea. But uh, hey, Milo, welcome to this. Hello. Hey. Um, yeah, let me, just one second, I'm gonna grab my headset. Okay.
Now I just see, I just see you. Is there anyone outside? Um, it's just us right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, I may edit it a little bit, uh, but it'll be available for those who couldn't make it right now to watch later. Okay, that should be better, so we don't get feedback. Okay, say something. Say something. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, we're on. Okay, so yeah, I was just trying to have like a sort of level-headed chat about things as we try to get the world back to normal. Um, I was trying to have more of these, but, you know, people have been discombobulated, obviously. And, uh, yeah, so just try to get a get people's take on things and um, try to establish principles as we start to see the world slowly go back to normal over the next few weeks and months or up to a year, maybe. Um, yeah. Anyway, do, do you have anything to add to all that? Well, you know, I think, you know, the natural tendency of most people is they're going to want to blame people. Right. You know, and, you know, I mean, there, there's not much to be gained in that. I mean, right. I, you know, I mean, I understand people, if you're, let's say, a scientist, you mm. might be researching the cause of it or the source of it or, you know, I, mean, I understand there's a few people, but what they have, their work, you know, really, there's nothing that we can do or say that's going to change anything. So I think right. avoiding blame is probably a good starting point. And then, and then, and then I think maybe some reflection on what we learned about this experience, because, you know, right. this is like a, an interesting, this is like never happened before, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I think that there's a possibility for a lot of good to come out of it, you know? I mean, yeah, you I know, agree. Um, you know, all of a sudden, you know, now people that, you know, they, they were never, never, we, with social media, people didn't make contact and now they're forced not to have contact right. and now they want contact. So, right, right, right. you know, I can see, um, but I think some reflection on it, you know, mm. a non-judgmental, but, you know, just kind of like a introspection is probably right. a, a positive thing. Yeah, I think one thing that I was just thinking is good, too, is just that um, before all this, we kind of had the tendency to just be like two, go, go, go. And it's like one day we're like, where's the time gone? Or where'd that decade go? Where'd my life go? And uh, what are these relationships? What am I doing? Do I want to do this? You know, so I think this whole time that, you know, we kind of transitioned into what we're at now in the last few weeks, and now we're going to transition sort of out of it in the next few weeks. And it'll be a chance to sort of, uh, you know, like you're saying, to, to reflect and find, um, uh, hopefully put some more things into balance because I, I feel like things were really out of balance before. And hopefully as we kind of took apart the fabric of society in a way the, the last few weeks and we try to put it back together, we can do so in a more, um, more balanced way. And you're right too. That's one point that I always try to stress. And um, I was mentioning a little bit before you jumped in was that, uh, for the most part, I think everybody's doing the best they can, but, and a lot of it's just a natural human tendency to try to, you know, point the finger, pass blame, project shadows, whatever, but uh, we need to take this opportunity to um, not do that so much and just, um, you know, just try, try to be there for each other without having to find an enemy, especially in this situation where the enemy is not even human, you know, it's some microscopic thing. So, uh, yeah. And, and I was watching a lot of the, um, updates today from the president and at least the California governor. And it's like, yeah, we seems like we really turned the corner on it and 
and not not only that we turned the corner as far as what our hospitals are able to accommodate if needed, but um, is everything okay with your dogs? <laughs> Sounds like you've got a dog back there or something. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Here, I'll uh, I'll mute while you're talking. No problem. But I was just saying, um, uh, we not only sort of turned the corner, but also, I think, come to a place where we realize uh, we can't do this much longer economically, socially, psychologically, you know, being such social animals that we are. Uh, and it's not like if we were to try to somehow keep things the way they are for weeks or months, you know, it's not like there's going to, we could do that. And then at some point be like, okay, it's, you know, turn, turn things back on. You want to phase it back to normal anyway, step by step. So then as you do so, you can start to see, you know, what, what the ramifications are on that. But again, the, the point I was trying to make in all this is like, we'll try to stick to principles more than politics as we as we do all this and that's on the it's archetypal like i like to say because it's going to be on the individual level the local community the state the federal the globally you know we'll see all these principles come together especially about politics but uh yeah can I make a comment? You know, I, one yeah. thing that you said, you said that this kind of broke, breaks things apart. And I'm right now I've been reading through Jung's collected works. Yeah. I mean, I'm in the alchemical volumes and, um, that's a tough one. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> I hope I'm retaining 20%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, one of the ideas in there was that they that you have to break it apart mm. so that you can put it together. Um, you, you know, so there's this kind of uh, div, you know breaking things into pieces and then re reform reforming. Um, yeah, that's an idea that's kind of in a lot, some of that alchemical stuff. And um, yeah, and that uh, I did want to. Um... Uh, mentioned that I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up because you know okay what one of the main reasons that uh Jung talks about that so much is because um that's that's actually a natural process that we go through uh and then it brings healing and maturation if we kind of go through it in a healthy natural sort of way but if we resist it too much, then it, that's where it brings, you know, complexes and all that. So, um, and then it's archetypal because that's on an individual, uh, you know, one, like, person level. But it's the same thing in, you know, families will go through that. Communities will go through that, through that uh, bigger and bigger and bigger communities, businesses. Um, and I feel like, you know, we've seen those in history too, whether it was because of uh, wars or uh, religious movements. Um, well, and also there, there's like two phases to that. And I haven't looked at the alchemical stuff in a while, but there's like, two phases that are constantly going on, which is one, there's the breaking apart, and then at the same time, there's putting back together. Um, uh, now I want to go in and like review the fun Latin words. Like I think it's like sublimato, sublimatio and uh, things like that. But there's like the breaking apart and the same time coming back together. And then sometimes the coming back together, it can be, as painful or more so than the breaking apart and so that's what i think we're going to start to see these next uh few weeks or months is the putting back together could potentially be um you know more painful or damaging than the the breaking apart um so that's 
So I don't, I don't know. I mean, um, you're so you're in the the alchemical right now. The what is that? Volume I'm in uh, thirteenth. Uh, the alchemical writings. I'm uh, almost done with the uh, the visions of Zosimos. Okay. And about ready to start Paracelsus as a spiritual phenomenon. That's yeah. where I'm at. Yeah, th those are those are tough. <laughs> Um, yeah. let me see. I mean, yeah, the I don't know, but the one, one thing you want to do, just just, just like a is um, the the main thing we always try to do is um, you know, find the the main principles, and one of the main principles in that, just like in in life, is this idea of um, of holding the opposites. And, um, and I think that's what we'll see too a lot these next few weeks and months is it's going to be a real sign of maturity on anyone's part who can uh, better hold opposite, whether that's uh, be able to see both sides of the political landscape, be able to see both sides of, you know, the economic, the health risk, the, because um, you got, you, it's like, uh, every, every piece of that, whether that's, okay, if we open up the country right now, what are the opposites that need to be considered as far as um, can we handle, can the hospitals handle it? Uh, maybe somewhat, but not. Or if we do, if we keep it the same, it's like there's nobody in the hospitals right now. So that's kind of like on the health front. And the, the economic front, it's like we can't go on like this forever, but how long should we go on? How long can we? Can we phase them back together? And kind of the phasing back together is like uh, weaving together the opposites again, which is mainly the opposites of like being, not being, and good and evil, um, which are kind of just like thought perceptions. But you got to kind of try to, you know, weave those back together in a sort of harmonious way. And I think that's what we'll see yeah, coming together the next few weeks. Yeah, one big one, I think, is just the... Uh introvert extrovert right polarity is you oh, know yeah, right, right now right yeah. right now the the extrovert the the boot is on the extrovert right right and um and uh um so that i think that that's one polarity that's being stressed or kind right. of unnaturally uh um So, I mean, this is a lot easier on introverts than it is on extroverts right now. Right. Yeah. Um, as, as someone who's a little bit more, I mean, I don't know, I'm, depends on the times and seasons and things, but I'm, I'm more introverted, but I almost feel pity for the ones who are really extroverted <laughs> because, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's literally like their brains can't work right now. And I mean, they can kind of, somewhat adapt in um you know the modern world of social media and some different things but uh i you know i made a post i think last week where i was like sorry sorry if any of the intro introverts are bullying the extroverts because it's it's new to them uh because it really is that way like that's how that like you know, traditionally, we think of the bullies being somewhat extroverted and then they're kind of like bullying the shy kids or whatever. But now it's kind of like tables of turn because uh, the extroverts are out of their element and then sometimes the introverts will laugh at them or make fun or whatever. But <laughs> yeah, that, Although, that's a big one. You know, from the standpoint of individuation, this is a bigger opportunity for extroverts. Right, right, right. Yeah, if, if they can voluntarily, mm. you know, what came to my mind when you, talk, you spoke about this is like the difficulty in putting things back together and breaking them up. Right. I think the difference is voluntary or involuntary participation. If right. you voluntarily allow it to do its work in you, then it can do something. But if you begin to resist it, Right, right. Um, you know, um, then it, it, then you end up projecting or, you know. Yeah. 
And it's, I don't know, I almost feel like those who can take it better because it's like more their natural environment, whether that's because they're uh, introverted or it's just part of their normal lifestyle. Um, th like we sort of have the somewhat of a responsibility to be there for those people uh, if, if at all possible, which is kind of why I started, why I started the group too. It's just kind of like, um, try to find ways to, you know, be there for people and have other people be there for people and just like, you know, put thoughts and ideas out there and not have them get, uh, deleted like mine were on some other groups, but, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's like definitely an individuation thing because, you know, it'll be somewhat forced and somewhat voluntary. And, and the, the more, I think what kind of comes to my mind talking about that is um, uh, let me see, Edward Ettinger had a book on the alchemical works and he talked in one section about how the Logos, you know, which is mainly the word of truth in in us, is the the sword or the the divider or the separator, the separatio or whatever, and then the eros, which is sort of the uh, unconditional love, so to speak. It's like the glue that puts things back together, and so yeah, when people try to sometimes people mix mix those up they try to separate with love and yeah you kind of want to maybe you can do that somewhat but you gotta separate with truth and then put back together with uh with love and hopefully that's what will happen these next few weeks we'll see <laughs> yeah but um uh, yeah so i'm, I'm, I'm just kind of we'll see because one thing I'm, it's just like, I'm surprised that, you know, people just aren't able to keep a, a clear head or a level head about it. Um, well, and some of the practical things, like I've just got some little notes, but some of the practical things that, like, okay, people get all caught up in the projection and the politics, like you mentioned, but some of the practical things that I think um, uh, we need to, be more prepared for is like um you know re regardless of this pandemic just because of these rules that are enforced that this month it's like you know still the average daily deaths even without this are between seven and eight thousand and so we're having to postpone you know funeral arrangements whether they're covid related or not we're having to um, you know, so whether, whether anyone close to us gets sick or not, those things happen regardless anyway, and just the normal, uh, you know, routine of life that, you know, anybody could pass away any day, you know, there's like real things that we need to be prepared for and try to, you know, be there for people and, it's like, yeah, people are, are mostly letting their sort of like shadows. <laughs> it's like the shadow slash um, I'm better at virtue signaling than you, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> you've got uh, like, uh, you know, I have a friend that just was like, um, I posted on there how he's like, he has a sewing machine and he like does it for fun, whatever. So he's sewing mask, and I put on, uh, you know, like my local community Facebook, like, oh, here's some some mask. Here's my friend, like, takes more time to make sure it's like good material and quality work because some people want trash ones and some people want ones that'll uh, be more reusable and look nice or whatever. And they're like twenty dollars, but they're same day service. And you know, all these people are like attacking me <laughs> for. <laughs> saying it's going to be $20 for a mask when it's like, well, okay, but it's, it's reusable and it takes 20 minutes to make one. So, you know, deal with it. 
but yeah, it's like uh, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, it's 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 a lot of shadow projection going on. That's cool. You know, I, I I think that you know there was a lot of shadow projection going on. You know, uh, before this hit, you know, it's just yeah. You know, I don't think you know. It's kind of like if 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 you can't project it here anymore, you got to find somewhere else to project it. So, you know, it's kind of like uh, you know, Jung says, you know, you can't you can't uh, you can't cut off the unconscious. You can try to stomp it down somewhere, and then it'll pop up somewhere else. Right. So, so I mean, this is you know. You know, I think before it it, it, it it seemed like it was just almost exclusively going on between the two political parties, the projection right. and the right, and like right. and the division, and it was it was getting just awful. I, you know, um, to the point I can't couldn't watch the news or you know just right and uh, um, but now you know in a certain sense I could see this like uh a non-entity being the enemy it's it, it, from a psychological standpoint it it, it, it has certain benefit <laughs> well it, it um, does but i i was hoping it would have more benefit that you know, you know there would be like we are the world hold, like uh, holding hands six feet apart somehow or whatever, you know, it's like, I I, yeah. I thought there would be more benefit of like, hey, we've got this common enemy and let's like just encourage each other to uh, do what we've got to do to be safe. But it's been like, like, uh, it's just like, a, I, I, asked, I asked some people like, hey, I was thinking about getting a haircut, um, you know, but very carefully. Um, you know, because if the person were to whatever meet me in their home and do so uh, very clean, the the risk should be at or below the level of going to the grocery store. And I put that in like my like local community uh, Facebook, like, hey, anybody know somebody who's cutting hair at home? And yeah, they're like attack me for that like are you serious you're like trying to kill people kind of thing and it's like uh, <laughs> i was just just thinking about getting a haircut for my own mental health and well-being but okay i'll just delete this um, i i yeah. am concerned about you know um you know a lot of people that might be given to a little bit of neurosis yeah. uh this this whole thing they're there's some people. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be scared to death to go anywhere without a mask for m a year from now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I don't think yeah, this is. You know, you're going to still see people wearing masks, and you're still going to see people. Um, um, so this is, you know, this is going to be. This is going to create a scar for a lot of people. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it'll be like. No handshaking, and I think you know, and to some degree that that should be the case. Like um, in a lot of places in Asia that are more um, clean, conscious, and germaphobe, maybe like it's just it's just sort of their custom that you know at least during flu season somewhat in the spring and more so in the fall, if you cough at all, at least, then you start wearing a mask. And, you know, it's been that way for a long time in a lot of other countries, but uh, that'll probably become the norm in most uh. of the world where not all year round, in fact, even like we may have some kind of a vaccine or treatment for uh, COVID within a year or two, but even if we don't, we're already seeing that there's a antibody, you know, immunity to it. Um, I'll get to these questions in a second. Um, anyway. Um, so there, there will be, 
Yeah, there'll always be people now wearing masks in the fall, at least probably the spring. Um, and that that's that's probably a good thing anyway, just because you know even as as is there would always be the flu going around, and you know that would cause some unnecessary deaths by shaking hands and germ spreading and all that. So. I, mean, I I would be in favor of adopting the bow, the, the Oriental yeah. bowing before each other. I think that there's a, it shows a lot of honor and respect, and yeah. in a certain sense, I like it better than a handshake. I think it has yeah. more meaning to it. So, you know, I'd be all in favor of uh, working toward, uh, you know, the West adopting the bow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was thinking about that. Whether it would be a Th that's going to be weird. It'll be over the next year, whether, you know, I, I, f I feel like even before this, I was, <sighs> that's the tricky thing about our sort of modern culture is the, the, you know, the multiculturalism that we've seen over the last centuries or so has been a good thing of lots of cultures coming together and everything. Um, but it's been so much so that now, um, like nobody really knows how to, whatever, what our customs are, you know, what you do when there's a death and what you do when there's, um, uh, you know, the, the people just don't know what any customs are as far as how to treat people who are um, older, how to treat people who are younger. Um, you know, we, we just don't have any customs. And now it's going to be like, oh, are we going to do like a salute? Or are we going to do a, a bow? Or are we going to do uh, uh, everybody carry handkerchiefs for handshaking or, or get, a, get a handshake glove or <laughs> it, or just uh, give each other thumbs up? <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I don't know if something might catch on it, or, or what. We'll, we'll see. It, it's just going to be strange because like, yeah, I, I like the bow idea, but for some, that's just going to be, they're just not as ready to jump on those foreign custom trains, I guess. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, so this other person, I don't know how to read their name, but is holding into the truth is self-destructive than letting go and embracing love. Um, that was a few minutes ago. We're talking about that. Um, let me see. Um, bah, 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 bah. Well, I'm just trying to think what he's saying here. Are, are you still there? Uh, Carnage Vader. Uh, but yeah, basically what, what I was saying about, um, tr so, okay. So truth, <laughs> truth and love as how, as far as how that we separate and put back together. Um, sometimes the analogy that, that I think of in that is if you look at a typical, um, uh, marriage, it's, or it could even be uh, best friends. It could even be business partners. It could be um, family members, but mainly uh, a marriage in that a lot of times where the issue is, is avoiding truth brings bigger problems, uh, which is to avoid arguments. Uh, that's where, you know, sometimes we let, snakes turn into dragons so to speak but then eventually we slay the um the monster with truth which is the logos sword and the sort of example that i was giving and so basically that's where sometimes we've got to take apart our relationships take apart our complexes take apart our ideas take apart our business structures community structures with truth and say okay here's the truth what's going on and then you put it back together with the principles and then sort of um, the arrows glue that I was talking about and that uh, example that Edward Edger gave in some 
text I can look up later. It's it's in my um, post from a few weeks ago. But uh, the arrow is glue, and then you kind of put it back together with love. That's the same thing that happens in business and marriages and family and just all kinds of relationships is you confront things with truth, and that will somewhat destroy them. It's like you confront, like, you took the cookie from the cookie jar. You looked at that girl, or you did this, you did that. And then there's the truth. You deal with it. They put together the principles, and then you put together uh, sort of the glue of putting it back together is love. And then you've got a bigger, better uh, relationship for it. And that's in relationships. But same thing on the individual level, like he was talking about, um, sometimes we uh, let go and then embrace it. And yeah, that's same thing, whether it's on the individual level or relationship level, where we kind of like sometimes have to let go of uh, ideas that we have, whether that they are uh, sacred ideas and we need to um, say maybe this could be wrong or I could hold the opposite with it sort of so to speak that sort of the good evil being non-being sort of polarity and then um, you, you bring it back together um, uh, yeah you can watch it when it ends just skip about the first uh, five or six minutes because that's when I was just kind of like setting up um but yeah that's so that's basically it. but yeah, what we we're talking about is how that's sort of what our world is going through right now we kind of like crush things and we found out there was this viral thing and how to how to deal with it and we kind of pulled apart the fabric of society to some degree and our economy and uh sociology and we're starting to try to put it back together so, you know, one yeah. thing I was thinking about the polarities and dealing with mm. the polarities that, you know, that, you know, and putting things back together, mm. the, you know, I think that we, we can create something beautiful or mm. we can create something monstrous depending on how we put it back together. Right. Um, you know, if you take uh, Germany after World War I, they put together something monstrous afterwards. You know, right, they were, right. you know, so that, you know, I think that there's, I think there's room, reason to be caution to, you know, to have some caution here at the same time. Um, I think that a big part of like putting them back together the correct way is avoiding identification with one side or the other side. Um, um, because when you become identified, that is your ego is attached to one thing, one side or the other side of any polarity, then they don't come together in a uniform kind of way. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, that's kind of like a Eckhart Tolle kind of uh, concept, but it's, it's true that um, the more like our egos – it gets a little confusing because there's so many different, um, you know, there's like a Freudian ego and a Jungian ego. And then Eckhart Tolle talks about it a little bit differently. And there's several different ways to talk about like ego and identification. And, uh, but yes, that's actually good on a lot of levels though, because, um, okay, that's the whole Jordan Peterson debate where he gets into, you know, what, neo postmodern cultural marxism is is the lenin and then right after that adopted by mao was the idea of identification in the broader community or the, the nation and potentially the world which was so basically, when you identify with something, you're sort of trying to make uh, to unify with it. And so, what their goal was in you know, Len with Lenin and Mao's China, it was to their their main thing was unifying the rich and poor and and bringing them together. And so, 
and they even said in their their writings it's like there's a bridge between the rich and poor we want to destroy that bridge and bring together the the rich and poor and there's some um there's some truth to that but of course really what, what you want to do is find balance and find harmony and find uh some of that's going to be in nature no matter what and you can't force it um but so as we bring the world back together we've got to um what we'll do is we'll find these it's kind of like the concept of finding forms and identifying with the the proper forms so in other words you'll see all these political things you'll see all these uh even religious movements you'll see all these different principles these different ideas and then it's instead of saying like I identify with a b c x y z this is me and those guys are bad it's like we should be able to kind of look at the landscape rise above and say okay here's all abc xyz to some degree all of these are in all of us as far as like all the political religious and everything uh but how do we bring those back into a more home harmonious society um especially with this challenge you know it's not like we're just doing it for the sake of doing it we, we've got this challenge which is uh you know overcome this public health issue, put the economy back together. But as that we do that, what we're seeing is um, the psychological issue, I think, is the biggest issue. Because as that we are trying to put back, put things back together, it's like the, the bigger issues are becoming, one, like, how are people responding to it that, like, you know, there's people that want to narc on each other, people that want to sneak out, people that want to, you know, do all those things. And then as some people are like, oh, maybe we should open this thing or that thing or do this activity or that activity, then you've got one group that wants to jump on that group and be like, oh, no, you're trying to kill my grandma or whatever, just because they want to go to the park or whatever. And, you know, so the, the big issue is bringing those things together. But the biggest challenge is going to be those, you know, psychological things. But... Uh, We'll see. It'll be challenging, but we can do it, and hopefully more good than evil comes out of it, and although there will be both, and it's so it's about balancing them. But anyway, I think that's about it. I just wanted to jump on and have a little chat, and I'll probably do this more often just to kind of like Put a level-headed approach on things and um yeah i might edit this but for the most part it'll be available here uh just gotta skip the first few minutes um anyway it was cool talking to you milo and uh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe we'll uh, we'll do it again sometime yeah but, uh, yeah <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, everybody, and uh, stay safe and all that. Bye. Bye.